all aboard for your chance to win $1,000 every week until December 28th. That's right, $1,000 cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. When someone says you should use a product or service, you are skeptical. You should be, which is why Myers Auto won't ask you to trust them for your vehicle repair and maintenance. However, they will ask you to trust their customers. My name is Jeff. I've been going to Myers Auto for about four years now. It's nice when you can deal with the owner of a business. And for me, dealing with Dwayne, he, he goes out of his way to take care of you. It's always going that extra mile for your customer. Find out for yourself. Myers Auto, just north of L on 140th Street. Hey, it's Jim Chapman reminding you that if you have not heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Three, Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast in only one place. It makes it easy, folks. So do me a favor, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Mardi Gras season, and Premier Credit is ready to throw you some cash. Any loan, any reason, and fast. For more information, call 225-667-8100 or apply online at premiercredit.com. Premier Credit, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. It's Tricia Johnston, residential realtor with Ladder and Bloom with your real estate tip of the week. If you're interested in buying a house, but your credit score isn't quite where you need it to be, there are six things you can do to help improve your credit score. First, pay your bills on time. Second, make more than just one monthly payment towards your bills. Third, ask your credit card companies to increase your credit limit, not so that you can spend more, but so that the total amount you owe is a lower percentage of your total available credit. Fourth, if you have any errors on your credit report, make sure you dispute those to get them taken off. Fifth, ask your bank to issue a secured credit card. And sixth, Even when you pay off a credit card, do not close the account, keep it open, and you may even want to use it periodically, but just whatever you spend, make sure you pay off at the end of the month. Your lender can help give you more advice and guidance on how to increase your credit scores, but doing these six things will get you on the right path and one step closer to becoming a homeowner. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm Tricia Johnston with Ladder and Bloom, and I'll be back here next week with another real estate tip for you. You may have noticed the large building with the beautiful new and improved sign (laughs) about a mile past Jubin and just before Pendarvis on the left and wondered, what goes on in that place? Well, I'm more than thrilled to shed some needed light on that. 
and answer a whole lot more about that building with my guest for today, who is director of Southeastern of Livingston, which is located in the Livingston Parish Literacy and Technology Center. So with that, welcome Crystal Hardison of Local Leaders, the podcast. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Oh, we love having you here. We're going to dive deep into all the exciting things that take place in the LP Litton Tech Center and really want to make people aware of all the services offered. But first, we want to learn some, some stuff about you. You have a deep history here. I have. I'm, I'm pretty much a native of uh, Livingston Parish. I'm born and raised here. My career has been solely well, I'll say almost solely, in uh, higher education, but in different capacities. So when I look at that, I look at the time that I've spent in each different capacity in higher education, both through Division of Student Affairs, academics, uh, now in administration, and how that's really helped me to be able to be the director that I am today. Yes. Um, yes. I, so I've lived in the Livingston or the Denham Springs area all my life. Your whole life. As a matter of fact, you grew up in a family business, right? Absolutely did. Um, anybody over the age of about 50 years old probably has a Tasty Freeze or what later became a Davis's Barbecue on Florida Boulevard there. Yeah. Um, or a Wild Bill story. My grandfather was referred to as Wild Bill. And, uh, you know, they came from uh, western Tennessee, my grandmother mm -hmm. and he, in the early 1950s. Um, he was a bricklayer, and he... Uh, Loaded up my grandmother and my mother because work was slow there and came to Louisiana. So they kind of left everything that they knew there to start a new life here. Um, later in the in the 1960s, right before my mom graduated from high school in 1965, yeah. um, he was approached to sell uh, to buy the, into a partnership for the Tasty Freeze, and that's when the family business came to be. I was I came along later in 1970 and I always remember having those stories being in that part of um, the family business. You know, when you're in a family business, you work. Yes. Uh, I think I started working there probably at 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. And um, until the day they sold it. And I think I was about 24 when they actually sold it. Well, you know who made uh, Tasty Freeze famous? John Cougar Mellencamp. Absolutely. <laughs> and then Wild Bill added to it, did he That's not? That's absolutely right. So, I think most people can can kind of give you a story of whether something happened in the parking lot or they remember the Frito dips or whatever the case may be yeah. um, from those from that time era. Absolutely. And and why did they call him Wild Bill? He was, he was just wild. <laughs> he was just he was a character. Yeah. I'll say that. Like, he had a great sense of humor. Um, didn't meet a stranger. So, um, and I, I would probably say that contributed to a lot of their success because he was always around town, whether he was eating at James's Drugstore breakfast in the morning, getting his hair cut at Sharp's, um, eat, uh, drinking coffee in the old Hibernia Bank or whatever. You know, if we needed him and we got busy, we, we knew where to call. So he was, making his, he was making his rounds. Awesome. And it was a family business, so you, you're very well-rounded in that, uh, you know, you have academics as your, as your older uh, occupation, I guess, or mm -hmm. your life's work. And then uh, below that, you have your your family business upbringing, which you, uh, we're going to get into some of the skills that you learned just through observation of, right. of people running that business, your family. Uh, in your questionnaire, when I asked you about uh, your early upbringing prior to college, you said something that stood out to me. So I'm going to have a few quotes in here, and I'm going to call this Crystal's Key Quote Number One. Okay. And you stated, I want to get this exactly right, watching my grandparents work hard is where I view the development of my work ethic at a very young age. They were True. hard workers. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. My grandfather worked the day shift, and my grandmother would work the night shift, um, and her OCD behavior was probably very well used in that because you could eat off the floor. Yeah, I mean, she was always cleaning, and so nobody really always wanted to work with her at night because she would work you harder than <laughs> you would work in the day shift. But right. um, she was just, uh, you know, she came up with the barbecue sauce recipe when they changed to Davis's Barbecue. She just started experimenting and figuring out until she liked the taste of it. And wow. um, so they came from the Tennessee background. And when McDonald's moved in and are uh, built in the early 70s, right there across the street on Florida Boulevard, my grandfather was concerned that that was going to put him out of business because sure. he was a hamburger 
yeah. shakes joint kind of thing. So they came up with the barbecue um, at addition. They still yeah. served all the other things they had, but um, and it was a big hit. It sure, was, it was a great hit, and that's when they added on to the what you see as the original Tasty Freeze, and it had a big pit in there. It was always a drive-in. It was not until uh, the Denim Patty took over and made it a sit-down restaurant yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so people would pull up. Sometimes there wasn't a place to park, which is always a good wow. thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that. And, you know, in, in your professional opinion, let me ask you what you think about this. So how important would you say it is for young men and women uh, to surround themselves with people that have a strong work ethic? I think that's something that kind of makes the difference a lot of times when they get older in their work ethic. Absolutely. I think whenever you can see someone uh, model those behaviors and those skills for you, because I don't think it comes naturally. So you have to be able to see those things and work through those things. You know, it wasn't always easy, but my grandmother, which is one of my greatest influences, probably in my personal life, you know, she always had the saying, bloom where you are planted. Love that. And she would, and, and she was the epitome of that. Like she was taken, not taken, she chose to leave, you know, her family and home and friends in, in West Tennessee and came down here to make her, her home with her family and things like that. There's many things that have gone through in my life, and she was just like, you're just going to bloom where you're playing it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to give up. You're going to just keep going and, and keep growing, and and it's just stuck with me all these years. You know, grandparents have the greatest sayings. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> because they're simple. They're just simple, to the point, and accurate. Yep. And uh, it comes from, I'm sure, that generation. Mm -hmm. But uh, but what a great statement there. So after uh, after you uh, graduated high school, you graduated from Denham Springs High School. I'm very proud to say my husband, myself, and my daughter are all Livingston made. We graduated from Denham Springs High School, and she went to Live Oak High School. Fantastic. Um, From there, we were. I was I kind of made a a little stint around the state with my college. career, I guess. I started out at Tulane University. Big brains. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> I came back to LSU and then I landed in 1991 at Southeastern and I haven't left since. Never and there left. is no regret at all. No regret. You mm-hmm. love that university. Absolutely. You can tell uh, just in talking to you how much passion you have for uh, SLU, and, mm-hmm. and that's a fantastic thing. Uh, but you did eventually graduate from Southeastern. I did. I did. I didn't leave long. I did a short stint as a guidance counselor in East Baton Rouge Parish because my yeah. degree, my undergraduate degree is in psychology. My master's degree is in counselor education. So I'm a mental health counselor by trade. Yeah. Um, so I was the guidance counselor in EBR at Howe Park Elementary for a two or three years of the first part of my career. And then I came to um, the university at Southeastern for the university counseling center as a mental health counselor. So that was the division of student affairs. So it's, it's important that you understand that students go to school for, you know, academics and education and things like that. But there's a whole standalone program with division of student affairs that help to make sure the students have things to do, that they're supported with the support staff, whether it's tutoring, counseling, whatever's going on. Cause sometimes this is the first time anybody's been away from home and, you know, you can get some, some issues with that. Sometimes yes. a lot of our students are working full time. So there's the stress of life and trying to make those decisions with education and things of that nature. So, you know. Wow. From humble beginnings in 1989, Big Mike's has long been a place for friends and family to gather for lunch, dinner, and drinks. Big Mike, Jocelyn, and their friendly staff invite you to come in and relax in one of their spacious dining areas or watch a game on one of the big screen TVs. Big Mike's is a place to meet old friends or make new ones. Big Mike's offers daily and nightly specials, and they specialize in serving up delicious and fresh menu items. Big Mike's offers a catering menu for large groups and has private party rooms for up to 100 guests. Whether you're planning a quick lunch or a large family dinner or just a night out with friends, Big Mike welcomes you to experience a great time. And don't forget to grab some t-shirts, caps, or koozies in the gift shop. Oh, or a bottle of Big Mike's Honey Dijon. It's delicious. Big Mike's Sports Bar and Grill. We're kind of a big deal. 
You graduated from college, but interestingly, you got married while you were in college. Absolutely. You know, um, how was that year, to balance this year? <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I'll be married 30 years this 30 year. Years. And um, for the first five years of our marriage, I was in college. Wow. And one of the biggest claim to fame that I'm very proud of, and, you know, I attribute most of it to my husband, is I graduated with no debt. No Absolute no debt. No debt. A huge thing. Yes. Yes. Huge thing. Yeah, I mean that's a. It was very important. Yeah, for us. Yeah, and and uh, you know student debt. I mean, you see it. I'm sure it's yeah. it, it can get out of control quick. Absolutely. And uh, and the cost of education has raised. You know, it's been so high at the same time. But yes, you know, yes. But you did. You made. You obviously made it through, and and you graduated, and and you've been married thirty years. I'd say it's a pretty successful marriage. Very As a marriage good. and family counselor, I think that's important to make sure that yeah. I have some credibility. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So um, on the subject of marriage and family, you have a daughter also. I do. And you mentioned her a little bit, a live oak grad. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you're all three LP made, as That's you it. said. That's it. So you obviously love your parish you grew up in and, and all those sorts of things. And, and uh, you're still active in this community. Of course, your, your business, he, you know, it's, it's right there in Walker. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not far away from where we're recording right now. Uh, and today we want to we wanna talk about that and okay. really clarify what, you, what it is that goes on there in that big, beautiful building. I'm going to talk about uh, the influences in your life. Uh, you stated in your, in your questionnaire that your grandmother had more influence on your life than you realized at that time uh, personally. And you also said that your mentors uh, – they rec- you know, it's important to give the give recognition to those Absolutely. people that in your professional life have kind of mentored right. you. So you describe these moments as light bulb moments, um, and this leads me to your key quote number two, which stated, "I think it's very important to give recognition to your mentor when they make those events." Uh, this also serves as a measure of my developmental milestones when I look back on my experiences. So essentially, um, when you look back and you reflect on, on times in your life, maybe where these mentors mentored you, mm-hmm. um, you think it's important that there's recognition offered Absolutely. there. Give me, give me an example of something that maybe a mentor, uh, you know, reflecting back that a mentor did for you that, you still use till well, just a shout out to all my counseling mentors, um, the late Sharon Fife, Paige Moody, Dr. Mary Ballard, Dr. June Williams, Dr. Lorette Swank, um, Dr. Tina Golding, all these strong, wonderful role models that when I look back at that toolbox in my life, I can look at these different milestones. And it was like, you know, they, they were always women in my life that would straighten my crown not knock yeah. it down. Yeah. So, and I think that's so important as young women come up that that they know that it's more important to make sure that that person, we're all going to hit obstacles. We're all going to hit the brick wall or whatever. And I can look back at a lot of those things, whether it was when I was in graduate school, learning to become a counselor after that point, And I got my first position as a counselor and something went wrong and I had to call that person and debrief with them or, you know, my first administrative job. And I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? My first teaching job, I taught 20 years in a college classroom. And I remember my first few weeks, I just got through by saying I was smarter than the students in front of me. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, cause it was yeah. one of those things I hadn't done. So I just took my counselor skills out of my box and I just put them towards the classroom. So I just looked at it as a big group. So all of those things, when I look back at the, at the mentors and the people that actually, there's always a tool in that toolbox that I can attribute to maybe that life, that life, uh, obstacle or that life milestone and how I've gone through it. And, you know, I hope that, as a mentor or, you know, at, at someone that is respected in the community or as a leader that I'm always adding to somebody's toolbox too. Yes. Yes. I agree. Very important. Yeah. Um, I used to tell people 
I, I used a little bit different. I love the term toolbox. That's because that's exactly what it is. And I would describe to people something that I've kind of done my, probably my entire life. Don't know where I picked this up from, but I would find, you know, you can learn things from almost all people. You know, everybody has quality of some sort. And I used to tell people all the time that I would see something in someone else that was working. And if I felt like it was something that I could do, I, I would, I almost described it like a sponge. I would almost, I would, I, I'm an observer of people. Mm-hmm. So I would watch them and I would try to mimic what they're doing in my life. If I felt like it would work and benefit my life and it was something I needed that maybe I was lacking. And that was kind of like, I guess my toolbox, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've had a lot of mentors throughout my life. And, but it's funny. We, we, as we get older, we reflect, right? Absolutely. So we look back and it's, that's why I do this. or that's why I work hard, you know, is because my grandmother worked so hard Mm -hmm. or uh, whatever it may be. And it's, uh, it's not something you may necessarily do when you're 20, you know, it's it's well, as no, you, at that point you're putting stuff in your toolbox yes. you should be looking for those things and I guess as a career development teacher educator all these years I've always told my students you know if I'm doing my job I'm working my way out of a job because I'm giving you the skills that you need in order to move to the next level yeah. so you're you know you may not always need that tool but it's always there for you to go back and access it and use it and see if it's working for you yeah. You know, sometimes we got to throw things out. Sometimes we have to do some spring cleaning and get new tools. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's just kind of that life process. So I always, you know, talked about it. I talked the talk and now I can feel it in my, in my position, in my job and in the community and think I'm, I'm walking the walk. So I'm actually doing the things that yes. I used to teach about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, you're, you, what you do and what you've made your life's work is interesting in that you are touching people. Tiffany Secard with Home Key Mortgage combines the experience and knowledge you need to make your mortgage loan a smooth, stress-free process. Reach out to Tiffany for more information on the vast mortgage programs available in the Livingston Parish area. Tiffany Secard of Home Key Mortgage, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. you're the mentor now you're mentoring these young people and and uh wow what a special job you have and you can mm-hmm. see how passionate you are for it uh just a just a gift you know Thank and you. and uh an awesome thing you're doing there so uh we're gonna fast forward a little bit to the more recent past and mm-hmm. that is your involvement with the southeastern livingston center okay so take us first i want you to take us back to when you found out you know, about your involvement with the center. And uh, I think you have a good April Fool's Day story Uh, involved in that. (laughs) It it, it is a funny story. It's about this time, let's see, two years ago. I can't believe I've been there almost two years. Um, So I get an email from, and and I'm teaching, I'm a faculty member teaching career development classes at Southeastern. I get an email from my dean. um, And then I also, on the same day, I get an email from the provost. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that that's the person right underneath the president and Uh and it just says request a meeting my dean says I need to meet with you as soon as possible and the provost says I would like to meet with you on you know April 1st whatever and I'm like now just so happens April Fool's Day is also my birthday yeah so for the last 50 years I've had just about every joke played on me for April yeah. Fool's Day. Yeah. So I'm thinking, what's that, going on? Yeah. You know, so I quickly get in touch with my dean, and she goes, oh, Crystal, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to send that to you. And so then I'm a little bit more suspicious. What are the chances that you get two emails from two people, you know, and you're right. thinking, what have I done? Am I in <laughs> trouble? It's kind of like going to the principal's office. Yeah. And then – um, It'll when, drive you crazy. Right. Wondering. When I called back to confirm with the provost – um, I happened to know her administrative assistant and I said, Hey, um, I just, I have a really stupid question to ask. And she goes, Crystal, you know, there's no stupid questions, only the ones that aren't asked. You know, you always hear <laughs> right, that, yes. that answer. And I said, is this an April fool's joke? And she goes, 
no why <laughs> should it be i said okay just just forget i asked forget i asked that's so like funny. that so when i went in to talk with dr golding um she said um i have an offer for you i'm not sure what you know i've she has everything laid out that i've ever done at southeastern in front of me and i'm like wow she's really done her homework that's yeah. what i'm talking about that strong mentor like yes. she, she's so strategic and such a wonderful person to work for and she goes i just feel like you need to be in Livingston. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, have I done anything? She said, no, absolutely not. She said, we need somebody with your connection to run this program, and I think you're the perfect person for it. And before I left her, she goes, I just want you to think about it. I, my mind was already made up. Yeah. I already I had already said, that's perfect. That's where I want to be. That's what I need to do next wow. kind of thing. Yeah. So it was it was it was really it was really fun and interesting and those words came back bloom where you are planted. Bloom where you are planted. And you know it's it, it perfect decision. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have someone with with better roots here and uh to to kind of spearhead that and and really really get that center rocking and rolling. Uh okay, so tell us um a little bit of the history behind the the tech center, you know, uh, how did it come to fruition? Well, it's, it's a joint effort. It's a partnership mm -hmm. between Livingston Parish school system and Southeastern Louisiana university. It was originally funded through the combustion class action suit. So that was, and the mission of the whole center and things like that is to better educate and make life better for Livingston Parish citizens because yes. of where that money came from and you know the the hazardous waste that was dumped here and things that had happened through that it was to turn that around and make it a, a place where people could be educated where they could go for whatever needs that they needed and things like that gotcha. one of the things when I got there the Livingston Parish um, Center Miss Kim Albin which is the career and tech ed person has done a wonderful job I mean they have flourished and 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 done so many wonderful things there i was a little confused as to where i kind of fit in right and i went back to administration i said you know i said we already have a brand yeah southeastern is our brand i said we need to be southeastern livingston center i said we need to set ourselves in the partnership absolutely promote everything there but let livingston parish know that southeastern is here yes. and that we're a convenient location because many of our students come from the Livingston Parish area alone, but also surrounding areas, EBR, Ascension, um, East Feliciana. And we're kind of that halfway point, so to speak. Yeah. Not that we're trying to do anything to take away from Hammond America because Southeastern has changed its all aboard for your chance to win $1,000 every week until December 28th. That's right, $1,000 cash just in time for the holidays. To hop on board, just head to churchillmortgage.com and punch your ticket to the Churchill Express giveaway. Visit churchillmortgage.com for your chance to win big. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee 37027. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. It's demographics and everything as far as the um, the student that we see now. Yeah. Before, Southeastern was a commuter campus. Yes. And not now. Now we're a destination for education. Absolutely. I mean, there are many students that, I mean, between the Southeastern scholarship programs, the housing scholarships, our new fabulous dorms are, you know, a big draw for all students to come but not every student is going to live on campus. So that's right. where the Southeastern Livingston Center works perfectly. We have kind of a motto, so to speak, cut the commute. 
Yeah. So it allows students, I don't know if anybody's looked at gas prices lately, but mm-hmm. gas has really Taking gone up. up. Yes. And sometimes, you know, that tank of gas is is detrimental to a college student. If they can come to our center, take a class, you know, maybe cut the commute so they don't have to go to Hammond five days a week. They can come to the Walker campus two days a week. Or we have a computer tech lab there. Or we have Wi-Fi. They can study. They can, you know, catch up on anything that they need to do there, along with, you know, if they need to do a Zoom meeting, where we have the cameras for them and, and things of that nature, just to be able to help supplement anything that they need that they may not have to go all the way to Hammond for. We're just Absolutely. there to kind of fill in that gap for students that may not be able to live on campus or take take you know, um, advantage of the resources that are there on campus every day. Yeah, it's a, it's huge. The benefit is huge. Mm-hmm. And and you have a lot of programs there. Uh, and I want yes. to kind of discuss, <laughs> let's discuss your program. Absolutely. So first and foremost, we have Southeastern uh, College classes there. The same class you take in Hammond is the same class that you can take in um, Walker. The thing is, is that we offer mostly gen ed classes, though. We're not going to offer maybe some of your upper level specialty classes like a kinesi theology 475 yeah. if that's even a class I'm not sure but I just made that <laughs> sounds <up>. good <laughs> but you know we're going to offer more of your biologies your your basic gen ed classes your uh English math um communication everybody that has to take those same 45 to 60 hours for the most part that's what you're going to find at our location fantastic yeah and also you've started some some programs there Tell yeah me we about we kind of developed um kind of a non-credit uh coursework which is called lifelong learning i'm a big learner uh, I'm, I'm a big advocate of never stop learning it doesn't matter what it is if you want to learn to do painting, drawing, you know, some of these are more leisure in nature. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, within the next few weeks, we can get you on the list and do some personal branding for businesses. I've got a lady that wants to do QuickBooks for startups, for startup businesses. Um, We've got Facebook Live, you know, a lot of people are in social media now, we know how important that is to get our, our message out there. But some people are a little scared of it, or don't know how to use it properly, which, you know, I'm, School of Hard Knocks, I'm trying to figure it out yeah. um, here and there. But uh, we're, we're offering all different kinds of things, but we just we want to know what the community wants. Right. So we'll throw it out there, and, you know, sometimes it'll be a fancy sugar cookie decorating, and I can have a pre-COVID 45 people in a room, yes. you know, and, and it's amazing some of the things that people just want to do and be able to get out. Tonight we have um, Easter cookie decorating Earlier this week, we had spring door decorating. Would you can do the the whole bow making class? Um, we had the cricket machine. How you do all the vinyl stuff and things like that. So we're offering whatever anybody wants to take. We have a great following with our ACT prep program, and all this is through lifelong learning. And you can go online. You can look at it. You can register. You can pay. So we've made it very easy. As, as well as we're trying to offer some virtual things, too, for people that may not feel comfortable getting out in the community. We do um, adhere to all of the social distancing rules. Everyone must wear a mask whenever they come into the building. So we're, we're, we're going along with the flow. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, let's talk about that for a minute because COVID uh, – I would say you have a pretty unique perspective in that your world relied heavily on the attendance of human beings, right? So take me, you know, through that process when when COVID presented itself Mm -hmm. and you had these challenges in front of you, right? I mean, you were no different than anybody else. None of us knew what we could do, what we couldn't do. It was kind of you know, back March of, of last year, it was kind of like everybody was glued to, you know, the internet and the TV trying to figure out every day it changed. Right. Yes. So the problem with you is, uh, or with the business that you're in is that, it, you know, these are face to face learning brick and mortar. Yeah. Brick and mortar. Yeah. And, so, you know, so we have the, the Livingston Parish side on their side. So they were, they kind of, you know, closed their doors we were asked to close our doors almost a year to the date and not knowing what it was. And I guess one of the things I kind of used, um, it's, it was like a kick in the gut. Yes. And I know this, this community really understands that because the flood of 16, <laughs> you know, I, 
everybody always says before the flood or after the flood. And now we're referring to times before COVID and, and after COVID. So those are going to be monumental times in our community. And many people after the flood of 2016 were just now getting their feet back on the on the, you know, playing yeah. field and, and feeling good about it. And then they were kind of forced to close their doors again, some temporary, some longer than others and things like that. So, you know, I had to close our lifelong learning classes. We had to go strictly online, um, which is a great alternative. It's an awesome way to be able to deliver academic information, but not everybody learns the same. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Not everybody teaches the same. So all of us found ourselves in a world, you know, I think we're all probably well-versed in Zoom calls and, you know, Google Meets and, you know, Team, Microsoft Team and stuff like that. So skills that will always forever be in our toolbox. But at the same time, I kept saying, I kept hearing people say, when we get back to normal. Yeah. When we get back to normal. And I think we just have to create that new normal and stay within our guidelines so everybody feels safe sure. and, and getting our community back. But, you know, we have a commitment. We were able to reopen our lifelong learning. Um, our classes were somewhat face to face. We kind of did a hybrid for the fall. Mm-hmm. We did a little bit more face to face in the spring. Um, we're hoping to do as much as we can that the guidelines will allow us to do for the fall and have as many face-to-face classes as we can. Fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, the numbers are really, t- they're uh, looking good, relatively mm-hmm. speaking, right now. I mm-hmm. mean, they're ticking down and nationally and and uh, uh, here in Louisiana. A lot of that, you know, are people that uh, want to get vaccinated are getting vaccinated exactly. and, and all those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully that will continue. And uh, because uh, my personal feeling is face-to-face learning is important. And um, you're right. Thank God. Could you imagine if there was no Zoom? Right. I mean, people don't think about that, but this hasn't been around for 50 years. I mean, uh, that technology, you know, really to where everybody could use it, and it was user-friendly, right. has only been around about 10 years. Right. Um, so thankfully we were we were kind of going through this in a time where that tech, technology existed and people understood how to use it. Right. And uh because I couldn't imagine I mean what would we have done without it? And not only in your world but in all worlds. I mean everybody was zooming in March of last year. Right. So um so just an interesting thing there. Now one thing people may not realize is that essentially this campus is a satellite campus of Southeastern, as you uh, as you stated, and that they offer the same college credit that you can uh, you can get at the university in Hammond. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. Do you find that it's common for folks to assume the course credit is different just because it's a different campus? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. They, so that's they'll actually we wanna... say, but what about the Southeastern class? And I said, it is one in the same. So there is some education that maybe they assume that it's remedial coursework or not yeah. the same coursework, or this is the big question I get, but will it transfer to Southeastern? I'm like, we are Southeastern. <laughs> you that's know? the big yeah. thing. Will you it know? transfer? We, we, I, yeah. And I, I feel that it's, it's good because of my former, well, academic career as an as a advi- academic, academic advisor the Division of Student Affairs and stuff like that. Like, I have those contacts when they come. I can show them or I can educate them as to how all that fits together. So I feel like everything I've done up to this point helps to for me to be more successful and helps me to play to my strengths. I agree. In that situation. 100%. So I can have a student come in and help them 
understand if they're looking to transfer if they're you know I can talk I can talk to them and get them to understand why this class will transfer as this or why this tr- class won't transfer for that kind of thing right so I've just got that that ability to be able to help maybe give a, a little extra rather than just handing them off to the next person yeah yeah and and so uh, students out there prospective students that, you know, it's just like going to Southeastern. It's just you ain't got to drive as far. Mm-hmm. That's basically it. If you're in Livingston Parish, it's kind of a no-brainer. If you, you know, I mean, uh, to me, go right there. It's, you know, think of the time per week that you save. Right. If it, you know, so consider that. Um, now, let's discuss your event rentals at your center. Okay. And uh, you have some amazing facilities. I, you know, I toured these facilities uh, and they really are amazing. You have several options there uh, for events. I know prior to COVID, you even hosted a Real Life Real Crime podcast, we very did. popular podcast here locally. Uh, they did they did a deal there that was extremely successful. It was, it was. Uh, so take us through the process. What's offered and, and how can folks take advantage of that? Through our auxiliary services, we actually do a rental contract through them. I, I send everything to Callie Burner over at our contract office over there because she's well-versed in all that. Yeah. But we have classrooms that have audiovisual. We have the auditorium. Um, we have uh, a community music room in the back that uh, – I got to give a shout out to my girls from uh, Abstract Soul. They've been my number one for the last year and a half um, since we started uh, Lifelong Learning. They do the yoga and guided meditation every Tuesday and Thursday. Abstract Soul. Abstract Soul. Love the yes. name. That's yes. awesome. So uh, Leanne and uh, Casey are absolutely amazing. So they use that facility. They use my, my community music room in the back. Not to mention, we also have Southeastern's community music school there that offer lessons. Um, they come to South really? e- to the Livingston Center yeah. and offer piano, voice, uh, violin, I think anything, Jifka is wonderful, the director of that program, and she she coordinates all that and comes in twice a week to be able to teach um, students in the Livingston Parish area if they're interested. Yeah, and, you know, the the auditorium you brought up, that is just an awesome facility. It's almost like a mini assembly center or something. (laughs) Just think of it like that. Um, And it is spaced out right now to where you can, you know, uh, follow regulations and guidelines as far as COVID's concerned. Now is the time more than ever to support local business. Alisa Verrett interiors and custom workroom is working hard to use made in the USA products for all their clients. Window coverings schedule your appointment today for a consultation on Roman shades, drapes, shutters, outdoor sunshades, and even woven woods. Need a virtual appointment? No problem. Call Elisa at area code 225-955-1135. Elisa Verrett Interiors and Custom Workroom, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Now, you can still meet. And it's a can, great space. I mean, if you fantastic. need it, you know, of course, with the, the social distancing, we are limited for the number that we have. Sure. But for the amount of rental that you get for the space, it's undeniably the best. So if you're ever looking for a workshop, for a, a talk, um, any kind of conference or anything like that, call us up and we'll see if we can, you know, do something. I also have a, a conference room that we can rent out if for anybody that needed like a professional conference space. Yeah. And uh, things oh, like it's that. A, it's a great facility and it's conveniently located. It's, Absolutely. it's right there off F- Florida Boulevard and, you know, right when you get into Walker. And so it's not so far off the beaten path that if you are doing some sort of class or event that uh, you have to drag people out into the middle of nowhere, yeah. so to speak. I mean, it's, it's right Adequate in the middle parking, of town pretty good, much. Yeah. Yeah, so um, very clean. Uh, guidelines are, are followed, and so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and even in the auditorium section, they have it kind of marked off where yeah. this, where you know where you can sit. So it makes it easy. You ain't got to kind of guess at it. I have the best staff there between um, Claire and Floyd and Stephanie. They help the place. People are there now for VITA, which is the a, a partnership with um, United Way for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. 
And I have at least somebody come by my office at least once a week, say, y'all have the cleanest bathrooms ever. <laughs> or this facility, when did it open? And when I tell them 2005, they're like, no way. That blew my mind. Yeah, that it's been open yeah. for almost 16 years now. And, you know, it, it, it's been well taken care of, and we we take pride in that. Yeah, it was. It, it's a beautiful facility, mm-hmm. and and uh, and all those sorts of things. And Rogers Pope, he played a key part in Absolutely. that early on. Sally Clawson and Rogers Pope got together and and formed this partnership and went through all of that and had the the original seed money um, from the lawsuit um, dedicated for that. Yeah, so, shout anyway. out Rogers Pope. Mm-hmm. Great job. Uh, so with all of that, you have given back to your community as well. And your 25 years of experience through education, you give back in a lot of ways, right? So you're a community partner with the Livingston Parish Library. Uh, you, uh, you also have, are a partner with the My Community Cares organization. Tell us about that. That is an organization that is here in Livingston Parish. It is made up of CASA. It's made up of um, F. CASA is uh, a great, absolutely. great organization. Um, uh, family services. There's a lot of community partners, a lot of um, local churches and things like that. They get together to look at the needs that aren't being met for um, youth in Livingston Parish, as well as other places. Um, We'll have a a monthly meeting or something along those lines. And I just try to help give um, referrals in the, in the uh, parish, any kind of services. Um, We had uh, them reach out to us over the, uh, the holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions, old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted Turkey or spice it up and make Turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. The Christmas holidays. Yeah. And we were able to, it was food focused through, it was somebody that con, uh, that had connected through United Way and My Family Care, or My Community Care is called, and we got them hooked up with uh, Mighty Moms. I couldn't Mighty think Moms. Of, yeah, there Mighty you Moms yeah. with Dawn. Another great Yes, great absolutely. So they were able to be able to provide uh, lunches, meals, and stuff like that. So when the schools were closed, the students that wouldn't have to go without um, wow. kind of thing. So, Fantastic. you know, I, it, it's such a wonderful position because I can I can kind of help connect people. Yes. I may not be I may not be able to do the service myself, but I can get them in touch with somebody that can. Well, that's huge. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest parts. Mm-hmm. And you you're also a member of the Hispanic Workforce Development Program. Tell yeah, me we that. have started that. Doctor um, Baraya, which is our Latin American Leadership Initiative. Uh, director at Southeastern, he is very interested in the um, growing Hispanic population in Livingston Parish and maybe not being as served in some of the um, areas that they need to be. Um, We met just this past week. He's starting to look at a leadership um, institute for students 7th grade through 12th grade to kind of introduce maybe some different areas where Maybe they wouldn't be looking at going to college. How can we start developing these leadership skills and allowing those students to see that that college is an option? Hopefully, Southeastern yeah. will be that option. Yeah. Um, and we talked about a six week program um, coming up uh, starting next fall, and then continuing it through the summer to do like a leadership institute for those students. Fantastic! Mm-hmm. And you know, let me ask you this: in your opinion. How important do you feel it is to give back to your community? Absolutely. I, as a career educator, I've always taught students that you have to know what your work values are. Hopefully your work values and your personal values line up. There's going to be some times that they do not. Yeah. One of my biggest work values, as much as my husband would like to change it to be high income, it is contribution to society. Yeah, that yeah. It, it, It's always been my number one. I, I feel better when I am doing something that's making a difference. One person, a community, whatever. But contribution to society has always been my number one work ethic. That's or my work value. And that say. speaks to who you are as a person. You know, it's interesting. When I was younger, um, much younger, um, it seemed like some of my life was a lot about taking. And you know, you look, you're starting out in the workforce, and it's like I want, I want everything I can get. Right. right so you're going right. out there, you're head full of steam, and and uh, 
eventually you realize that's not really what it's all about in the right. end. It's it, it's about um uh I guess as you mature you realize it's about giving back and and you know it's something about that's just good for the soul, right? Absolutely. And uh and so you have done an obviously an excellent job of that. Being, you know, Livingston Parish should be very very proud to have Thank someone you. like you uh right there you're right there in town uh so in the questionnaire one of the questions i asked you was uh the characteristics that you specifically look for in a leader and this leads me to crystal's key quote number three and in my opinion the best one of the day this one really got me and it's you said great leaders are people in which others have confidence in and respect for they have clear goals but are open to alternative perspectives. They care about those that work with them, but are capable of making the tough decisions when necessary. They are self-confident without being loud, aggressive, or dominating. Couldn't agree with that more. Absolutely. That's my measuring stick. Casey, have you called the plumber about the sink in the break room? Yep, they came this morning. I can't believe you missed them. What was their name again? Giotz Plumbing. Wow, that was quick, and they did a great job. They did. And when you need plumbing services of any type, give Giotz Plumbing a call. With over 50 years combined plumbing experience, the team at Giotz Plumbing can handle all of your plumbing needs. So whether it's residential, commercial, new construction, or reconstruction, give Giotz Plumbing a call at 907 907- 6282 and get scheduled fast. Giotz Plumbing, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. Yeah. That's my measuring stick. Yeah. I believe leaders never have to say they're leaders. It's, it it's shows. A, yeah. It's apparent in the way they carry themselves and the way in which they execute in their personal life and their business life. Um, and, you know, sometimes when you're aggressive and dominating and you're, you, you do this or do that, you're not getting anything out of people. Well, and except I don't, have all, the, and I don't right? have all the answers. I yeah. mean, how good of a leader are you if you're not listening to other people giving you alternatives? I mean. I agree. You know, you there's always a different way. Always a different way. And it's funny, um, you know, I've had a lot of leaders on this show and, and learned some excellent things. And one of them in particular told me, uh, he said, um, the best leaders are people that realize what they're good at and what they're weak at. And the things that they're weak at, they hire people that are good at. Absolutely. You know, the problem with some people is they, especially business owners, they think that they are good at everything. And it's hard to admit to yourself, you know, I'm not a salesman or I'm not a you know, a numbers guy or whatever it may be, or numbers gal. And, and, uh, so when you can admit that and then you put people in those positions that are really good, correct? you're probably a pretty good leader, my opinion. And what you said was totally accurate. Thank you. So um, I just feel like in, in a leadership position, if, and, and in, in my particular position, I get to play to my strengths every day. Every day. It's it. Of course, my weaknesses come up. Of course, we're going to always learn and things like that. But I'm thankful that I have many people in place that allow me to grow through those weaknesses yeah. and, you know, and try to turn them into a strength. But also they can pick up that slack where my weakness is. Yeah. So, you know, I surround myself with wonderful people and they are they're just great. Awesome. Awesome. What a blessing. And Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to do something fun for a second. And I do fun facts on this show. And and I enjoy these fun facts more than just about any other ones I've done. I did them on higher education. Oh, good. Since that's kind of what we're all about today. And I did some specifically to Southeastern. Okay. So um, hopefully I'll learn something too. (laughs) You might. You might. Uh, So here's some Southeastern University specific fun facts. It is actually the state of Louisiana's third largest college. Right. A lot of people mm-hmm. wouldn't think that. Yep. Um, I was one of them. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was that high up on the list. Yep. Um, LSU is, I'm sure, number one. Flagship. Tulane mm-hmm. probably is somewhere in there, but maybe not. I don't. I don't know who the second was. Um, Southeastern has over fifteen thousand students and over hundred and fifty programs of study. 
Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So yeah. basically, if you want to go to college, they probably have what you need. <laughs> at Southeastern is what's the, what that is saying. Um, the student to faculty ratio, which I was very impressed with, uh, is less than 20 at 19 yes. to 1. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yes, we do. We, uh, we, we pride ourselves on that. Yeah, for sure. that's a big deal. Now, uh, Southeastern is also rated in the top 60 in the nation for colleges where students receive the best return on their investment. What we were talking about Absolutely. earlier, college is already expensive enough, right? Mm-hmm. Get return on your investment, mm-hmm. uh, young people. <laughs> so <laughs> um, so that's fantastic. Absolutely. That says a lot. But here's the big one. This is the one, uh, you know, as a father of twin girls, I loved this. And that is Southeastern is rated number one and considered the safest university in Louisiana. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. That is not something that I, I'm, I'm not surprised. I taught you something yeah, today. I taught yeah. the teacher something. Ham in America is, is, is a place to be. Like I said, destination yeah. for education for sure. Yeah. And safety uh, is a is huge thing. Good, yeah. You know, us dads. Speaking as a, as a Southeastern parent, my daughter's graduating in May in communication science disorder. She lives about five miles off of campus and I'm looking at other grad schools and you know, or yeah. she's looking at other grad schools. We're looking at areas around there, and there's some concern about that, you know, where she's looking at going. I would love for her to stay at Southeastern. Unfortunately, they we don't have the audiology program there, so we've got to look elsewhere. But she has completed her degree program in three years, and it has been a wonderful, wow. wonderful experience for her and so much she's accomplished through uh, you know, whether it's in the classroom or outside of the classroom. Absolutely. Why wow, you proud of her. I'm Absolutely. Sure. That was awesome. So some general fun facts on, on higher education you might find interesting. Over one's lifetime, a person with a bachelor's degree stands to earn $1 million more than someone with a high school diploma. Mm-hmm. Although higher education can be expensive, the payoff, you know, usually, mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to make about a million dollars more typically. I exactly. mean, there's exceptions to everything, but uh, the stats are the stats, right? So college right. is still important, you know, still it, important. Yes. Um, 50, 58 years ago, 50 years ago, 58% of U.S. college students were men. Today, 56% are women. Maybe ladies are smarter. I don't know. Probably <laughs> so. I attribute, uh, you know, the... That little flip right there. Fifty years ago, it was a whole different world right. for women. Women, right. I mean, uh, these days you have dual income households. Right. Fifty years ago, you, you did not. that was very rare. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, shout out to all the ladies out mm-hmm. there that are that are getting that education, and and actually they're they're killing us men right now mm-hmm. out there in the in the college world. Uh, but interestingly enough, I found this one interesting. The first woman with a bachelor's degree was named Catherine Brewer. That's all right. She she graduated from Georgia Female College oh, in 1940, wow. uh, 1840. Oh, wow. Not common at all. No. In 1840, right? She was, you know, she was probably uh, a super special lady. I'd yeah. love to, I, I might even do some research. I'd be curious how she, well, that's a major this thing, month, right? This the month, first man, yeah. female to get right. a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Wow. So, Crystal Hardison, staying on the subject of women. Casey Mack, staying on the subject of women, some may not realize it's National Women's History Month, right? So in honor of this, Local Leaders of the Podcast has chosen five of the top female leaders in the community who make a difference every day, which you certainly do. So it's our honor to present you with this plaque that Casey's going to walk on that screen and give you. Uh, commemorating your lifetime of service to education and your commitment to Livingston Parish. You are a 2021 local leaders leading lady. Thank you for all you do for this community. Thank you so much. Well, we appreciate you. And, uh, before we, you know, wrap up, I want you to tell everybody where you're located, uh, give an address and shout out your website and your Facebook or whatever y'all. Yeah, we're located at 9261 Florida Boulevard. Our um, Facebook, Trust Southeastern me. at Livingston. It is not the at symbol. It is A-T. So Southeastern at Livingston okay. is our Facebook. Our Instagram is Southeastern underscore L-C. 
And our website is southeastern.edu forward slash Livingston. Fantastic. And a lot of the things that we talked about, all of the things we talked about today, I'm going to link in the description of this video. Make okay. it real easy for people just to go down and click on it. And Wonderful. it'll bring them to to all the fantastic. You can see pictures of, of the building that we talked about today mm -hmm. right there in Walker and get all the information you need on the on this uh, this particular uh, location. So and if anybody wants any information on it, you, you can also call me and we can put you in touch with yeah. Crystal, especially for the the event side of what they do and the classes. Uh, if you're interested in, in teaching a class or, or whatnot on, on whatever, yeah, you know, call ba me. baking cookies, yeah, whatever, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I do want to thank, uh, oh, and follow them on Facebook and they'd appreciate it. And it, it makes us look good. <laughs> so I want to thank, uh, the always entertaining Casey McMurray for all she does in her role as executive producer of a local leaders of podcast. She's invaluable to our success. I want to thank everyone out there for viewing and listening to Local Leaders. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share the podcast. Thank you to all our sponsors as well, including Premier Credit, Trisha Johnston Realtor, Big Mike's Bar and Grill, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance, Sporting Center, Black Sheep Creative, SR Enterprise, Elisa Barrett Interiors and Custom Workroom, Giotts Plumbing, Tiffany C. Carter of Home King Mortgage Buddies Barbecue in Denham Springs and iTrade Exchange. We could not do any of this without all of you. And stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be announcing our second of five uh, leading ladies on Local Leaders. And we'll have another great episode. Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you to love your community, support local business, and keep leading. Thank you. Jim, we're swamped with these podcasts, and I'm in the mood for some local barbecue for lunch. Barbecue? Casey, the problem with barbecue is the speed. That would take forever. Not at Buddy's Barbecue. With the drive through line, they can get us fed fast, and that sauce, mmm, yum. It is right in the heart of Denham Springs. Do they have specials? Yes, they have plate lunch specials every day, Jim. And I bet you didn't know they offer some of the best catfish plates you've ever tasted on Fridays. And on Saturdays, they have smoked ribeyes. They are as flavorful as you can find anywhere. Okay, I'm hungry. What's the number? I'll call it in. No, just go online and place your order. By the time you're finished, I can head that way. That is convenient and really smart. Yep, just like me. A local business, and you know what I always say. Oh, yes. Jim Chapman loves local. Correct. And that makes me smart. Oh, please. If you're in the mood for barbecue, go see Buddy's Barbecue at 105 Florida Avenue Southeast, right in the heart of Denham Springs. They're a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.